Well, there's Harrow, not the school, but the the other thing. But well, this is um, one that Mark found, which is air glow. Yeah, A I R G L O W, which is radiation from the upper atmosphere. Mm. The seven. Good, nice one there. For air glow, the seven it was over there, five it was over here, and over here it's the letters to be chosen by Simon. Uh, start with a consonant, please, Cal. T. Uh, and another? P. And another? S. And another? And... Z. And a vowel? E. Uh, and another? I. And another? A. And a consonant, please. N. And one more consonant. And a consonant, thank you very much. And C. And with those letters safely in, let the countdown now begin. Simon. Six. Six now. Steve. Seven. Seven. Six. Simon. Stance. Stance. Yes. Seven. Capsize. Capsize. Yeah. yeah. Very good. Excellent. Yeah. yeah. It's a good word. Capsize. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's another couple of sevens as well. There's inspect and uh, one that Mark got immediately, which was panties. Didn't you? You got that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Twelve and five then is the score. And now letters from Steve. Um, consonant, please, go. K. And another, please. L. And another. R. And a vowel. E. And another vowel. U. And a consonant. F. And another consonant. D. And uh, a vowel. O. And a final consonant, please. And a consonant, thank you. And B. Good. So round three starts now. Well, yes, Steve. Um, slightly dodgy seven. Good. Slightly dodgy seven, that's what we like. Simon? Uh, seven. We would have a slightly dodgy seven. Uh, flowered. Yours, Simon? Boulder. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really good. Boulder and flowered, well. Yeah, we couldn't, couldn't beat that. It's too, too excellent. Yeah. Marvellous. Mm. Very nice indeed. OK. Um, so, well, the score's going well here now. 19 and 12. So, Simon, it's your numbers then. Could I try four from the top row, Carol? And you want the whole ones, lot please? from the top? Yes, please, yeah. And anywhere special? No, take your pick. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, <laughs> you're too kind. OK, we have nine and five. You've probably written, round, written down what's coming already. 25, 50, 75, and 100. And the target, 871. All right, gentlemen, eight, seven, one. Here we go. Well, Simon, you asked for it. 870. Ah, for one away, that's a good stab. 870. What about you, Steve? Um, 875. 875. So we'll look at the 870, please, Simon. Uh, nine times 100 
is 900. Nine times, yes, 100 is 900, obviously, yep. Minus 25, minus 5. Yeah, minus 25, minus 5, and that is uh, 870. Yep. Mm. Is that as good as it gets, do you reckon? Uh, yes, I didn't get... Uh, I got 872, actually, I was one above. Mm. But, um, yes, I can't get 871. <laughs> <laughs> Does not make me happy. <laughs> Love you when you cross. <laughs> um, well, 870. I will leave it at 870 because we're obviously not going to make any more progress. So uh, the scores are uh, 19 and 19. Which is all right, isn't it? OK, that's a good point for the break. Of course, uh, sadly, it's uh, Rick's last uh, day with us today. So it's uh, for the last time for the moment. It's uh, a little anecdote from you, Rick. Well, last week I, I read out some answers that some primary school children had given to some questions on Proverbs, and this is a sort of continuation, but this is questions that kids in a primary school were asked about marriage and what they thought about marriage. And uh, here's some of the questions and some of the answers they came back. How, how do you decide whom to marry? Kirsten, age 10, said, no person really decides before they grow up who they're going to marry. God decides it way before, and you get to find out later who you're stuck with. <laughs> How can a stranger tell if two people are married? Eddie, age six, said, married people will usually look happy to talk to other people. <laughs> Derek, aged eight, said, you might have to guess based on whether they seem to be yelling at the same kids. <laughs> what do you think your mum and dad have in common? Laurie, aged eight, said, both don't want no more kids. <laughs> <laughs> what do most people do on a date? Lynette, aged eight, said, Dates are for having fun, and people should use them to get to know each other. Even boys have something to say if you listen long enough. <laughs> <laughs> Martin, age 10, said, On the first date, they just tell each other lies, and that usually gets them interested enough to go for a second date. <laughs> when is it OK to kiss someone? Pam, age 7, said, When they're rich. <laughs> <laughs> How would the world be different if people didn't get married? Kelvin, age 8, said, There sure would be a lot of kids to explain, wouldn't there? <laughs> And the one I really like, which is, uh, how would you make a marriage work? Ricky, age 10, said, tell your wife that she looks really pretty, even if she looks like a truck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're good, though. So they're after the mouths of babes and sucklings. Absolutely. But, wonderful. Uh, I'm the daddy of them all, and I always like to remember him uh, whenever I can. Les Dawson, one of the great, yes. uh, I mean, he's a great mother-in-law joke, one of the great wife jokes. What was it? Uh, I haven't spoken to my wife for two years. I don't like to interrupt her. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we, we'll interrupt the proceedings for the moment. We'll be back as soon as we can. Thank you. <laughs> OK, well, welcome back, everybody. And it's only... Uh, well, it's halfway, but it's, uh, there's nothing between these two. We're just 19 and 19, so everything to play for as we move on to round five with you, Simon. Uh, consonant, please, Carol. N. And another one? G. And another one? T. And another? M. And a vowel, please. A vowel. E. And another? A. And another? O. And a consonant? S. And another consonant, please. And that's W. Okay, doke, here we go on round five. Simon? Uh, seven. Steve? Just six. Well, here's a seat, this, here's the six from Steve. His wagons. Yeah, no, here's a seven. Uh, magnets. Mm -hmm. Magnets. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. Could have extended that to magnetos, um, as in uh, the electrical generator. 
Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's a couple of anagrams. Yeah, there's, yeah, there's a uh, key thing of Les Dawson now, how he would describe the mother-in-law. You've got megatons. <laughs> <which is laughs> <laughs> and then uh, montages, which is, which is nice. But megatons mm -hmm. is great. Yes, Les used to say, they won't let the mother-in-law leave the country. <laughs> they won't let that much meat out. <laughs> what is it? That's, it? that's right, I'll get it right. They won't let the mother-in-law go abroad. They won't let that much meat out of the country. <laughs> OK. Montages as well, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Steve, now, your uh, letters, please. Um, consonant, please, Carol. R. And another. V. And another, please. S. And a vowel, please. E. And uh, a consonant. And a vowel. A. And um, another vowel. I. And a consonant. X. And uh, a final consonant, please. And a consonant, thank you. And that's D. Yes, sir. Here we go. Simon? And six. Simon, six. Drives. Simon says, drives. Steve says... Divers. Divers. Divers and drives. Almost the same, I suppose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Again, just add one more letter with divers and you get advisor. Yeah. It can be spelt with an E or an O at the end. Advisor there. Yeah. Is uh, there for seven. OK. Well, six for you chaps. So the scores then, 25 and 32. Three rounds, one of each now. Letters from Simon. Uh, Continent, please, Carol. Thank you, Simon. N. And another one. T. And another. J. And another one, please. Y. And a vowel. E. And another vowel. A. And another one. E. And a consonant. T. Uh, and another consonant, please. Another consonant, thank you. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> oh. Hey ho, hey ho, here we go. Great J Y, oh, Jimmy Young himself. J Y, there. What have we, what have we done with that, folks? Simon, just five. Pardon? Five. five. Yes, Steve. And five. And five. Okay, Steve's five. Jetty. Jetty. Yes, Jetty. Simon. Yeah, same word. Good Jetty. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's only we found one other five which was eaten. Yeah. But or teeny, but no better than five. Yeah. yeah. Difficult, so difficult a bunch of letters. Though. Yeah, it's great because we had Harrow in the first half, and now we've got Eaton in this half. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, there we are. Uh, 30 and 37 now, so it's still close. Numbers then from Steve? Um, one from the top and any five. That ones, one please. and any five. Hope it's slightly easier this time. Mm. The numbers this time around are six and four, three and five, nine and 75. And the target is 801. 801, everybody, 801. Here we go.
Yes, well, 801 then, Steve. Um, just 800. Well, just 800, not bad, not bad. Simon? 801, but I've not written it down. Well, can you do it? I'll try. Go on then. Mm. Uh, six plus five is 11. Yeah, six plus five is 11. Times 75 oh, yeah. is 825. It is. And then nine minus three is six. Oh yeah, very good, yep. Times the four is 24. 24, take, take it, away. it away, yes, 801. Wow. Well, well, to say you hadn't written it down, what, how, how would you? How many marks out of ten for that then? Absolutely ten. Eleven. Yeah. Eleven out of ten. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. That's fantastic to uh, a, a to arrive at that and then to remember without writing it down. I know it's very difficult when you haven't written it down. Yeah. Actually, yeah. yeah. Well, well done, uh, Simon. That is excellent. Ten points. Well deserved. I'm sure you'd agree, Steve. He he, uh, he deserves those points, and uh, he's taken himself out of harm's way by so doing. So let's move on to the conundrum, so you can add 10 to their score now. If you're ready, that's the button. OK. Please now reveal today's countdown conundrum. Yes, Steve? Oblivious. Oblivious, which is, of course, what you are not, because that's what it is. Well done. <laughs> OK, well... You know as well as I do what that means. It was very good for you to get that numbers game, uh, Simon, because it got you, as it happened, it got you out of the woods. But uh, the ten points uh, to Steve weren't enough, so 40 and 47. So yet again we have a new champion, uh, Simon Cooper. Well done, Simon. <laughs> I don't know, it just seems to be the pattern of the last uh, week or two that people are coming in the chair for one or two and then being knocked off. I mean, it's got to stop. It's costing us a fortune in teapots. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Steve, uh, your teapot is well deserved mm -hmm. and everything else. And uh, good luck in your, in your main career, obviously, which, is, uh, which we all applaud, a psychiatric nurse. Uh, not an easy job. And, uh, and your sideline as a, as a bit of a funny man, eh? Will you, what, will your, what will your stage name be? Will it be Steve Clark? Uh, 